hit the forward button before I forget. Um, so my name is Summer Grooms. I will be your instructor for this course for the next seven weeks. So ELT 120 is a seven week course. Hopefully you already knew that. Um, with that in mind, it definitely goes really quickly. So um, just be mindful of that and of all of the deadlines and all of the work that is due. There is quite a bit of work for this course, um, but that's just the nature of having a seven week course. It's condensing all the material into uh, seven weeks. So this is the first week. It'll go till July 21st. I believe that's a Sunday. Don't quote me on that. Check on a calendar. It is. So essentially by midnight on the 20th is when I would have all your work in. Anything not in by that day will automatically be a zero. Um, so today I'm just going to kind of introduce the course, make sure that you all are very clear on the expectations, on how the course is going to run. Um, I'll save a decent amount of time at the end for any questions or concerns. And um, yeah, so with that I'm just gonna pause and check in and see if there's any like questions that any of you have up front. Um, if not, it's totally fine. But just to make sure, All right, not hearing anything. So assuming <laughs> no questions yet. But if you have some in a minute, once I go over everything, let me know. So I'm gonna pull up the syllabus here. And I won't explain everything on the syllabus, but I'll just kind of explain the, the main ideas. So it's loading right now. Um, you should see it. I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is ELT 120. So this is circuit analysis one. So just a little bit about kind of the pathway for this course and some of uh, some of you why you're here. If you know, I'm assuming most of you know kind of your pathway. And what I mean by that is some of you are either going to become electricians on the lineman pathway. Some of you might have to take this course through work, um, but there are a couple of different reasons you might have to take this course. One thing to keep in mind about ELT 120 is this is the a prerequisite for a lot of courses, specifically 126, which is circuit analysis two. Most of you that have to take one will have to take two. Um, I say that for a big reason, and that is in order to take 126, you have to pass this course through the passing grade, which happens to be a two point. So definitely be mindful of that. I, I hope all of you get four points and get higher than a two point, but it's definitely good to just keep that in your mind as you're going through. So if you realize, if you see that you're falling behind, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I am here to help you any way that I can and support you. Um, and I know being... An online course is kind of difficult sometimes because we don't always meet face to face or get the opportunity to. But just know that, you know, um, my you should have my email address. Don't hesitate to reach out. I try to respond within the day. If I don't respond in 24 hours, feel free to send me another email. It might have just been that it went to my junk mail and I didn't get it. But all in all, just know that communication on my end is super important. Um, and please communicate as, as much as possible with me. Don't ever hesitate about sending too many emails or no such thing. So, um, okay. So we're going to meet every Wednesday, 5 to 6 p.m. online. So this is the time that we're going to, to meet every Wednesday. Um, you might have, and you should have probably received some information from Kim about the math meetings. So ELT 120 is a little bit unique in the sense that there is both a math component and an electrical component. So Kim and I work together, but it's pretty separate. So um, just be mindful of that. It's still one grade. So what that means is for ELT 120, the math and the electrical, and I'll show the grading procedure in a minute, combines together. So that can be a positive in the sense that if you do, if you really struggle on the math side, but excel in the electrical side, it'll kind of balance it out a little bit, but it's also a negative because it means one of them can bring you down if you're you know doing substantially worse on the other so um that's important to know kim is absolutely great um if you ever have any questions concerns about the math portion definitely reach out to her um if it comes to this the you'll see that the content we talk about on the electrical side kind of mimics the math that you use so for example 
um, some of the math like formulas and equations you use, you have to do those same formulas. You might have to use those for an electrical problem. So it does go hand in hand, but um, definitely reach out to, to Kim if you have questions on the math. But um, of course you can bring those math questions to, to me as well, um, if, especially if it relates to the electrical problem. So a little bit about me actually is I am an engineer. So the math side is I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that too. Um, so kind of, I've been at Jackson now for about a year full time. I've done about three years as an adjunct. Um, prior to that, I went to MSU to get my master's in environmental engineering. And I worked for the state of Michigan and oversaw the drinking water department. So not the whole department, but I oversaw, gosh, about 30 water systems throughout Michigan, um, Jackson included. So you guys have great water if you didn't know, but um, yeah, so that's kind of what I did prior to coming to Jackson, but I love my job now. And um, yeah, so I didn't put it on here, but my office hours on campus are JW229. So if you ever are around, feel free to stop by. Um, for office hours, I don't, I, I do have um, a couple of different days that I can meet, but really it's your, your schedule. I recognize that a lot of you work full time. Um, a lot of you have other other things you got to do. So I will accommodate my schedule to meet yours. So if you ever want to meet with me, I we will find a time, whether it's 5 a.m., midnight, if you need to meet um, off hours because you work third shift, don't worry about that. I'll, I'll find a time to meet. Um, office hours I typically do via Zoom, but of course, if you want in person too, um, we can meet uh, in my office. So just be mindful of that, that, you know, even though this is an online course, if you ever need help with anything, don't hesitate to reach out. So a little bit about kind of what we're going to talk about in this course. So it's definitely a, a basic electrical course. So by that, we're going to talk about DC circuits. You've probably heard of AC and DC electricity. So this course is focusing on DC, which is direct current. It's a little bit more straightforward than AC. Circuit analysis, too, is when we're going to kind of dive deeper into more complex topics and talk about AC electricity, um, but that's why this one comes first. No prerequisites for this course. Um, well, this course is heavily um, based on a lot of problems, and what I mean by problems, I mean like math problems. So there are there is a lot of it's pretty easy math, like, and what I mean by easy, it's like simple equations, like multiplying two things by one another. Um, but basically, we are going to use math to calculate various parameters in a circuit and to solve for a circuit. And what I mean by solve for a circuit, I mean solve for different elements in a circuit. So solve for the voltage, solve for the resistance, um, solve for the the voltage dividers, just things like that. So you're going to have to use math equations. But we're, that's why we're going to break them down and make sure that they're they're very clear. Uh, so as for the grading procedure for this course, the math quizzes occupy 65 points. Your electrical quizzes is 166 points. And your amateur modules, which I'll explain today, are 70 points. So that um, gives a total point of, I'm going to add all these together, 65 plus 166 plus 70. So there's 301 points possible for this course. So essentially, whatever grade you have, I'll divide it by, let's say you get 190. Well, hopefully you get more than that. Let's say you get 290 points. If I would divide that by 301, that's a 96. So you would get a four point. So um, it's kind of works on a point system. Um, with this, you can see that the math portion is still is very important, but it is significantly less than the electrical portion. So if you're going to focus on anything. The electrical is a majority of your grade. The amateur modules also relate to the electrical side. Um, and this is what we're going to talk about in these meetings going forward. So this week, uh, obviously, is the, the first week, but we'll talk touch a little bit on the topics of week one. But going forward, I'll talk about the electrical side. Specifically, I'll focus on the content that's very important uh, for the quizzes and for making sure that you um, obtain the, the competencies or the knowledge that you're supposed to get from this course. So here's the grading scale, looks pretty standard. Um, so attendance is important to talk about, and that is because of the fact that there are requirements to do every single week. So you'll see that this course is divided up into modules. 
And so each week you should do both the electrical module and the math module. And then there's a module completion survey. So this module completion survey should be completed at the end of the, each week. If you do it earlier, like if you finish all the work, that's great, but you can't, you just can't do it. Um, it's due at the end of the week. And essentially that's just acknowledging that you finished everything. Or if you didn't finish everything, it's acknowledging that you didn't finish everything and you have to write a little blurb about how you're going to get caught up. If you don't do that module completion survey, I'm going to assume that you're no longer taking the course. And when I go to take attendance, it'll probably automatically drop you. That's not to be mean at all. It's just because for financial reasons, I don't want to have someone in the class that's not actually taking the course because still they'd have to pay for it. So just be mindful of that. Um, also, if you don't do any modules in two weeks in a row, you'll be dropped from the course. Again, just because I'll assume you're no longer planning on completing. If there's an extenuating circumstance, reach out to me and we'll figure something out. I try to be as accommodating as possible. So don't worry about that. But as far as what hours of the day you do the work, it's totally up to you. And again, that's because I know a lot of you work. Um, so, you know, whatever hours of the day work best for you to get some work done. Um, as long, again, as that you have it in by the end of the week. Um, as for these meetings going forward, they won't be mandatory. Um, this first one is just because it's the first week. I want to make sure everything's clear. I will record them. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you have additional questions or want to meet individually, we can do that. And um, yeah, I will say kind of how the presses will work going forward is I'll um, typically have like a PowerPoint slide and I'll talk through some important elements of that week. And then it's really just a time for you to ask questions as well. If you have any questions or concerns that you want to um, ask me, we can we can talk through them then. So the last thing here, all of this uh, definitely is important, but I know it's pretty standard for other classes. So here is the calendar. So you'll see that each week it gives a topic. Like I said, the last date of this course is 721. So 715 is the last week. Each week you have quizzes and amatrols to complete as well as those completion surveys. Um, and as long as you get all of that done, you'll you'll be good to go. So with that, I'm gonna pause and then I'm gonna open up the Canvas and talk through kind of what's in Canvas. But before I do that, um, any questions about the syllabus, about the grading or about the attendance? All right, not hearing anything. Let me make sure my sound's on in case. Okay, um, so that's good. I'm hoping that means everything's clear, but please, if there's something that's not clear, <laughs> let me know. Okay, so I'm just going to share my Canvas screen. It's gonna pop up in a minute here. So you'll see that the Mass Zoom link is here. That's gonna be with Kim on Tuesdays. We did purposely do the math first. And that's just because from feedback from past students, it seems that the math is easier to come first because sometimes you have to use that for the electrical problems. So that's why the math is first. Um, here's the syllabus here if you want to read it over, some student resource links. So in this general tab, you'll see that uh, there's a little bit about the course here. So it talks about kind of what this course is and just, you know, make sure that you read the syllabus. And complete all your assignments. This is a textbook here. So it's a PDF version of the textbook. I will be totally honest with you and say that the textbook is very dry. It's not very fun to read, um, but this is almost like a supplemental resource. So I'm not gonna require you to read the textbook. You can get away with doing well and learning the content without reading this textbook because of the other resources out there for you. But some people learn best by reading a textbook. At least I do. Um, so if you do read best by reading the textbook, this is uh, available to you. And my computer froze, so I'm gonna, there we go. Uh, but this is available to you to read. And each week it tells you what chapter to read or what chapter is relevant for that week. So I think week one, it's chapter one. Um, so if you want to schedule office hours with me, you can click on this link or email me. Um, and then Kim has some math reference sheets, which I'm sure she'll talk about. 
So these here are the weekly completion surveys. You'll see that there's zero points. That doesn't mean that they're not required. That just means that they don't count for your grade. Um, but if you click on one, you'll see that it's pretty standard. So essentially just has, has you check that you completed the module. Um, there's a question that says, if you didn't complete the module, kind of develop a brief app action plan that shows how you're gonna catch up. And then if you have any questions or concerns, you can write them there and I will review them every week. So like I said, you'll have to complete that at the end of every week at the latest. If you move ahead, which is totally fine, you're welcome to move as ahead as you want in this course. Um, you can do those early as well, but you'll see that the they're all due at the end of each week. So June 8th is the end of the first week. That's the Saturday. So that's when that first one is due. So again, make sure you do those. Or um, when I go to take attendance, I'm going to assume you're not taking the course if you don't. Um, okay, so that brings us to week one. So kind of how this is structured on the electrical side is that you'll see that You have, I'm um, sorry, I'm just looking because I see this is probably confusing that there's this and this one. So I'll change that um, so they there's not two shown there. There, This one is probably an old one. So I'll delete this one here. If you did this one instead of the other one, that's fine. I'll count those two, but just be mindful that they're, <laughs> they're right here. So you can ignore this one for now. And actually, I'm going to hide that. So um, you'll see that each week there are a couple of lectures. So these lecture videos are really helpful. They're about five to 10 minutes each related to certain topics. And all of these are helpful for the quiz for that week. And this is um, during the time that we meet five to six on Wednesdays. I'll summarize all of these and kind of touch on some key points. So. Um, to do well in this quiz, definitely watching these and attending these lectures are really important. And then you'll see that there's something, this is the amateur module. So if you remember back to the syllabus, it's 70 points out of the 301 is the amateur modules. The way that these work are you have a pre-quiz um, that doesn't count towards your grade. You can see it at 0%. You can get a 0% too, because it's just a pre-quiz. Um, then there's this launch button. And what this is going to do is launch the learning material. So this is kind of like a, a hands-on textbook. So you'll see that there are different. Uh, I always go up here first, because if you just start clicking around, sometimes it'll have you do like the orientation of Amitrol. And that gets old. Like if you, I think it's right here. If you click on the tutorial, don't click on that. You can, but I you can just kind of navigate as well. So you'll see that um, there's different obje objectives and you can kind of click on them. I always turn off the sound because it gets old, but this first one's kind of long, it's 82 slides, but you'll see there's not a lot of words on them. Some of them are just kind of like um, little simulations and things like that. Or it's, it's nice too, because it's a little bit hands-on. Like you can see this is a multimeter and that as I move my cursor, it's actually changing. So there are like little things that you can do within it. And it has you do little skills. Like this says, click on the graph it to toggle between fluctuation and voltage and fluctuations and current and to see how each affects the bulb. So you can, you can see that as the voltage um, increases, the lighter gets brighter. So uh, just little things like that, that there are throughout the modules. And then the way that your amateur modules are graded is that there's a quiz at the end. In order to take the quiz, you have to um, go through this learning material or it's not going to let you launch the quiz. So I think you have to do the pre-quiz and the launch the learning material before you can take the quiz. I'll also say that you can have both up at the same time. So if you want to like open up another screen here and have the textbook out, like that's fine. Um, it, it's open book. Um, the main idea is just making sure you understand it, right? And you should be able to use their, your resources, in my opinion. Uh, the other thing I'll say, too, is you only get one attempt on this quiz, which I know sucks. I wish I could do two attempts. It's just the system doesn't allow for that. 
Um, so one thing I would say is if you get started and you're really struggling, just exit out the browser and it'll, it won't save. And then you can just restart it. So that's fine with me. Cause I understand sometimes like it's nice. I at least like to read the questions and then kind of go back and, and learn and see um, kind of in reread sections. So that's okay. So however is easiest for you or however you learn best is, is fine with me. Um, just make sure you do that quiz. As for the electrical quizzes, which again, these are 166 points. Most of them are just multiple choice. You do get to attempt. You get unlimited time. You also get unlimited time on the amateur modules. Um, and that's how these ones will be graded. So I think this first one is 12 questions. And you'll get, again, two attempts. And those. And one thing I'd say, too, is if you do your first attempt and get a lot of questions wrong, come to these office hours, or not these office hours, come to these uh, Zoom meetings if you can. And let me know which ones you got wrong and we can kind of talk through them and hopefully make sure that the concepts that you didn't understand that you now understand after we meet. So feel free to bring any questions to that meeting. And let's see, with that, I think that's pretty much it. Um, any, I'm gonna just pause. So we're about 30 minutes in. I'll probably talk a little bit about the week one content for 20 minutes, save 10 minutes at the end. Um, but before I get, into the content for week one. I'm just going to check in and see if there's any questions or concerns. Hopefully everything's clear by now, but if not, now's your time to ask. <laughs> Alrighty, not hearing anything. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Um, I'm going to turn off my camera just because I'm going to close down my computer. And I'm going to pull up these slides. All right. I feel for you all. I know it's it's rough sometimes to do summer courses because it's never ideal to have to take summer courses, but hopefully it helps you have an easier fall load. Modified. Sorry, it's somewhere hidden, hidden here. Okay. If I forget, I'm gonna take a screenshot of you of all you who are here just so I can make sure that I mark who has attended. Okay, so some of the important topics for week one, you can see that it talks about the basics of what electricity is, and then it talks about circuits and the important parameters that come into play when talking about circuits, and that is voltage, resistance, and current. So voltage, resistance, and current are the fundamental parameters that we talk about when talking about electricity. And that's because those are the three um, variables that are in Ohm's law. You've probably heard of Ohm's law before. Ohm's law is the relationship between these three terms. Um, and Ohm's law is something that we have to use when we're designing circuits for almost every electrical course that you take here at uh, Jackson College or beyond. So I'm going to pull up and show my um, PowerPoint slides. You should see them here in a minute. Hopefully. They're, they're loading here. So at the basics, uh, what is electricity? So when talking about electricity, in this sense, essentially it is the form of energy resulting from the existence of charged particles. Um, those charged particles are typically electrons. So um, you'll pr you've probably seen it in that amateur module I had up a minute ago. It showed a, an atom. Um, an atom you know, has charged particles inside the nucleus, protons, and then the electrons are 
those negatively charged particles that are kind of orbiting the um, atom. You might remember that from any chemistry course that you've had to take. Um, but essentially, in simple terms, electricity is just the movement of electrons. And that's what a circuit is. So a circuit, which is shown here on the right, is just a movement of, of electrons along a certain path. Because that's what circuits are doing. They're kind of harnessing electricity by way of using electrons. One thing that I think can be kind of confusing is the relationship between electricity and electrical energy. Um, and I know in this, it says it's a form of energy here, but really it's not. Um, it's, I always think of electricity as a secondary form of energy, whereas electrical energy is a type of energy. So you probably know there are different types of energy, right? There's solar energy, electrical energy, kinetic energy, uh, potential energy. Um, and all of those forms of energy, you know, energy can never be created or destroyed. It can always change forms. And that's what we do all the time. So that's how renewable energy works is we're harnessing solar energy and converting it into electrical energy because that's the most useful form because electrical energy can generate electricity is kind of how I would think about it. Um, and that's really in, in the basic sense how things like a generator work is it's um, harnessing mechanical energy by moving um, like inside, right? There's like movement, mechanical wheels inside a generator. And that movement is um, creating mechanical energy. And then that mechanical energy is getting converted to electrical energy, which can be used to energize your house. So that's all that um, renewable energy is. It's not like we're using solar pans, panels to actually um like heat our house, which we, I mean, we are, but the solar panels aren't doing it, right? The solar panels have a mechanism inside that's converting it to electrical energy, which is more useful. So um, and that's kind of a tangent, but just important to note that like electricity and energy are a little bit different, but electricity is kind of a byproduct of energy and that's what we want. So on the right here is a good depiction of what a circuit is and kind of how we're gonna draw them throughout this course. Um, a couple important elements here um, this arrow is pointing to the battery. We know a battery has a positive and negative side. That's important for later when we talk about batteries. Um, but essentially, the, ba the battery kind of serves as a propeller in the circuit. So this is what's giving a push um, of voltage of energy to kind of get the current flowing or get those electrons movement moving. So the greater the battery or the greater the voltage, the greater the push, and the greater those electrons are going to travel along that circuit. Um, and that's why we have different voltages of batteries. Uh, the other important or things noted here on the circuit is a light bulb. Of course, it's not always a light bulb. A circuit is just, it's whatever we're trying to energize. Sometimes it might be a light. Sometimes it might be an outlet. Sometimes it might be a, a, a well, washer. Um, so essentially, that's kind of what you're getting to energize in the circuit. Typically, when we draw just like a basic circuit, we use a light bulb just because that's a basic example, but it's also referred to as the load. So the load is kind of what you're um, getting to be energized. A switch is also shown here. So for electrons to travel from one end of the battery to the other, which is how um, it works. If it doesn't have a complete pathway, the current will flow and it won't energize anything. So a switch essentially opens and shuts that circuit, which is turning off and on the electricity or stopping and starting the flow. And that's exactly how a switch works in your house. It's turning off and on the energy, which is why the light turns off and on when you flip the switch. Um, so it's important to note here that close equals flows, which kind of sometimes is, seems backwards. Um, but when that switch is closed, there's a complete path. Electrons can go through that complete path from one end of the battery to the other, and electricity will be energized. When that switch is open, like it's shown here, elect the electrons aren't going to be able to complete a whole loop, and nothing's going to be energized. Um, does that make, hopefully that makes sense. But please, if you have questions, feel free to interrupt at any time. But if there's no questions, I'll keep moving forward. Um, let me be mindful of time, 34. So these are just a couple of the major terms, like I mentioned, and that is current, voltage, and resistance. And these are really important to know the symbols, the unit of measurement, and the unit abbreviation. 
So current is denoted by the symbol I. It's something that's measured in amps and the unit abbreviation is A. So you might say the current is 5A or 5 amps. Um, as for why the symbols I, it I believe has to do with the French word for current. Um, but I don't know why. I'm assuming maybe C was <laughs> taken. Um, so V is for voltage and the symbol is either E or V. I typically see it as B, but I think on the chart, one of the charts I have, it, it's an E. Um, and that's probably from energy is why sometimes it's used, e, uses E. So it's something measured in volts, which you know that because batteries can be like 80 volts or five volts, um, that's the voltage. And the unit abbreviation is V. Final term is resistance, which is measured in ohms and it's a uh, unit abbreviation is this like horseshoe. So we already touched on voltage. Again, it's just that push or the pressure that's moving those electrons along the circuit, but it's essentially how much potential energy exists to move electrons from one point to another, which makes sense, right? Because um, potential energy is kind of a confusing energy form to understand, but potential energy is essentially how I think about it is it's an object has a potential to have energy if it falls. Is the best way that I think about it, or it's stored energy. So a good example is like a ball high, high up on the shelf has potential energy. And the reason it has potential energy is if that ball falls, all of a sudden it's going to be moving, right? And it's that movement is going to generate kinetic energy because that's what movement is. So the greater the height of that ball, the greater the potential energy, right? Because the greater potential it has to create more kinetic energy. So um, it makes sense that a voltage is how much potential energy exists to move electrons from one point to the other. Because looking at this, that's what a, um, the battery's doing, which has the voltage. It's moving from one end to the other. And the greater the energy is, the greater distance it can go. Um, current is, again, measured in amps. It's also measured in coulombs per second. You don't see that as often. So current is just the speed that your electrons are going through the wire. So it's how fast they're going. So voltage is um, that push that starts it, but current is the speed. Resistance is a little bit more confusing to understand, but essentially it's the measure of opposition to current flow in an electrical circuit. So what that means is resistance is the unit or the measurement that is opposing current and this makes sense right because if we think about what resistance is or when you're resisting something you're working against it right and that's what resistance is in a circuit it's working against the current um so with that in mind we sometimes add resistors in circuits to slow down our current the greater resistance you have the smaller your current's going to be and it also is the opposite, right? The smaller resistance we have, the greater the current. So they're kind of a way, adding resistors is a way to manipulate your circuit. And it's important to note that, you know, this is a careful balancing act because, um, you know, if you have resistance that is abnormally high, it can damage your conductors uh, and cause burning or corrosion or Fire. So there are safety concerns with if you have any of these terms too low or too low, um, high. So resistance and current too, I would say there's something called inversely related. You might hear that term sometimes in the math side of things. And when something's inversely related, it means when one goes up, the other goes down. And that's exactly what resistance and current are because they're, they work against each other. Uh, there are a lot, the other thing to note here is there are a lot of factors that impact resistance. Um, and that is things like the length of the conductor. The conductor is the actual material through which those electrons are traveling through. So it's typically wires um, like aluminum or copper, are the most common. And the material of the conductor, so again, if it's aluminum or copper, is going to impact your resistance. How big the conductor is, so the diameter or the gauge, you probably have heard of like gauge numbers of wires. So like a 12 gauge wire is a normal, 12 or 14 is a normal size of wire used in a house that has to deal with the diameter of the wire. Um, the load you have, so again, that's what you're being energized, like the light bulb. Uh, the only thing that does not impact resistance is the strength of your power supply. So that has no impact on your resistance. And this brings us to Ohm's law. 
So Ohm's law, again, is a relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, which is the I. Well, the I is current, sorry, net resistance. Um, so these are essentially the three equations. You'll see that it's all the same equation. It's just solved differently for if you're solving for V, I, or R. So the equation is voltage equals current times resistance. So what that means is we can solve for voltage if we have current or resistance. Likewise, we can solve for current if we have voltage and resistance, and we can solve for resistance if we have voltage and current. So essentially what this is telling you is if you have two of the three terms, you can solve for the third. And that's a lot of what this week is doing. And a lot of the quiz questions you'll have and a lot of the concepts to understand is just all, all having to do with this concept of using Ohm's law to solve for either voltage, current, and resistance. And I like this chart. Um, the E is for voltage, again, because sometimes they use E. Um, we're going to talk about power next week, so you can ignore the, the P's for now. I know those equations are a little bit more complicated, but this is just a quick um, chart that has the equations. So like you see, R equals E divided by I, or P divided by I, if you remember it better like that, or voltage equals I times R. So it's nice to like have all these equations handy. And now we can do a couple examples. So let's say you need to find the current in a circuit with 15 volts and 3 ohms of resistance. Okay, so we have we are finding current, we're given voltage, and we're given resistance. So if we go back to here or here, the equation is I equals V divided by R. I'm using this one because we're solving for I. And it's um, simply put, I equals V divided by R, right? where our V is 15 volts and our R is 3 ohms, so 15 V or 3 ohms. 15 divided by 3 is 5, so that means 5 amps is your answer. So this is pretty similar to some of the quiz questions you'll get. Any questions on the math here or how this worked? Hopefully it was pretty straightforward, but if not, be free to ask. All right, not hearing anything, so I'm hoping that means it's clear. And so here's another example. This time we're going to solve for voltage. So voltage, um, I remembered it, but if you need to go back and look, that's fine. It's voltage equals I times R, at least I think it's that. So in this example, our I is 200 amps. I know that's the I because I know amps is a unit for current. And it says of current, so I guess that makes it obvious too. <laughs> and then the resistance is 10. So 200 times 10 is, I have to use my phone to do the math. Okay, 2,000. I'm not good at doing math in my head. So I <laughs> always have to have my phone double check me. And this would be your voltage. So really, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's just using simple um, multiplication and division to solve for these three terms. Another example here. So resistance, the equation for resistance is E divided by I or V divided by I. So we can do V divided by I equals R, where V is 10 and I is 25. So this would be divided by 5 2 fifths. Um, so you'll see that sometimes you'll get a fraction or a decimal. That's fine. The answer choices will never be like super close where you'll get it wrong because of rounding. So I've already kind of briefly touched on this, but there is a relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, and that is they're either inversely or directly related. So when something's inversely related, it means they're opposite. When one increases, the other decreases. Direct means they have the same effect on each other. So when one increases, the other increases. And you can test this by quickly doing math. Um, the reason I bring this up is because it's A, important, but B, there are, are a couple quiz questions on it. So let's say 
We have a problem with the circuit with a 5 volt battery and a resistance of 25. What is the current? So it would be V divided by R equals I, I think, right? And so we would have 5 divided by 25, right? Because the voltage is 5 and the resistance is 25. So that gives us a current of 1 fifth which in decimal form is 0.2. So we have a current of 0.2 amps, right? But let's see what happens if we increase the voltage to 10. So we did have the voltage as five, but what happens if we leave it at 10? So now V is 10, we're gonna leave R the same. So R is 25. 10 divided by 25 is 0.4. Okay, so what happened? So you can see that when we increased the current, the voltage increased, as where when we increase the voltage from 5 to 10, the, volt, the current also doubled from 0.2 to 0.4. So what that tells you is when we increase the voltage, it increased the current. And when that happens, that means it's directly related because an increase in one causes an increase in the other. Okay. Let me plug in my laptop. Okay. Uh, and if you were like to graph this, just out of curiosity, so let's it would look like this. So let's say we were graphing your voltage and current together. It would look like a line, like sort of yellow, this, right? Because as the voltage increases, let's say that the, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, the current is increasing, right? 5, 10, 15, 20. So they're both increasing. Um, but let's say, what happens if we decrease resistance? So um, our resistance was 20, was 25, right? 25 ohms. So let's say, let's decrease that. We're going to compare it to this. So we're going to leave the voltage the same as 10 volts. And now we're going to decrease the resistance from 25 to 10. And you can make it whatever. It'll still be the same concept here, but 10 divided by 10 is one. I just wanted an easy, an easy problem. So uh, one amps is your new current, right? So it increased our current. So when we decrease resistance from 25 to 10, it increased our current, right? So that tells you that current and resistance are inversely related, which we already talked about because that makes sense, right? Because they're working against each other, but it also makes sense mathematically if you draw it like this. And just to show it like this, if you were to graph this, it would look like this. like this, because as we increase our resistance by 10, 15, 20, it's going to decrease our current from 10, 15, 5, or no, 15, 10, 5, like that. It'll decrease your current, right? So that's how you would draw. You don't have to know the graphs, but that might be important for the next slide. So I'm just going to bring it up. The main thing knowing for the electrical side is just knowing um, the relationship between the three terms. Okay. So the other thing just to briefly mention here is the idea of DC and AC current. Um, DC stands for direct current. And what that means is you have the flow of electric charge in only one direction. That's the focus of this course. AC, which stands for alternating current, is the flow of electric charges that periodically reverses direction. So um, you'll sometimes see AC, like when you draw a circuit with AC, they use this like sideways S symbol. That was a horrible. Let me redraw that. Uh, they use this like sideways S, so it'll have a circle and then like an S inside like that to indicate like the changing of direction. So this symbol, um, they might have like a circuit around it, is indicating AC. Anytime you see a battery, you can automatically assume that it's direct current. So that was like, yes, here. 
was a battery, I assume that's direct. Um, so again, the focus on this course will be on direct current um, and the applications of direct current. And that's just the flow of electric charge in one direction, meaning uh, in AC electricity, your electrons are kind of moving back and forth and back and forth and kind of oscillating, whereas a direct current, they're just moving one way and they're never going, I guess, backwards is another way to think about it. Um, the reason that's important to know is for AC is the one that we use, you know, more widely nowadays. And that's because it can travel longer distances for cheaper. And that's because of the fluctuation. Um, so just be mindful of that, that like as the next couple, seven weeks go by and as you take 126, I'll try to touch on like real world examples of DC and AC. But the main things are, um, or the main thing is this flow of direction. For direct current, it's one direction. For alternating current, that current is alternating. Um, okay, so with that, that's really most of the content that's important for the first week. Um, I highly encourage you to take an attempt. Everything made sense today. Take an attempt on the first quiz, um, see where you stand. Um, if you get a couple wrong and are still confused, let me know, reach out or watch some of those lecture videos and that will help. But this should really kind of set the stage for that. Don't forget about the amateur module um, either. The other thing just to briefly mention is you um, will have to submit electrical quiz eight, which I believe is week six to me via a submission box. So that one you have to like write up. It's not too complicated and we'll talk through it in this class period, but just be mindful of that, that all of the electrical quizzes are multiple choice except one and that's electrical quiz eight in week six. Um, but with that, we have nine minutes for any questions or concerns. So if you have any questions about the material I went over today, now's your time to ask or any questions about kind of how the course runs. Um, last thing before I take it over for you guys that didn't get questions, um, make sure you complete that module survey and complete your modules um, by the eighth. So you have a couple days, but, and when I mean modules, I just mean the amateur module and then the any electrical quizzes for that week and any math quizzes for that week. Sometimes there's two. This week, there's only that electrical quiz one, but you can see what to do by looking at the modules um, each week, like module one, module two. Um, but yeah, so with that, I have no questions. If there's no concerns, you're free to log off and enjoy the rest of your night. Um, but if there are questions, I will stay on for however long it's needed to answer. Thanks. So um, thanks all for joining.